Hello guys, it's the Binoculars View Media Top Info here with another hot trending video. If you haven't subscribed to this channel kindly subscribe, like and hit the notification bell on your screen now to stay updated. Don't forget to share and tell a friend to subscribe like and share. Today we are going to look at Katanji Brown Jackson, the first black female Supreme Court nominee. Since Justice Stephen Breyer announced his retirement, President Biden has conducted a rigorous process to identify his replacement. President Biden sought a candidate with exceptional credentials, unimpeachable character, and unwavering dedication to the rule of law. And the president sought an individual who is committed to equal justice under the law and who understands the profound impact that the Supreme Court's decisions have on the lives of the American people. That is why the president nominated Judge Katanji Brown Jackson to serve as the next justice on the Supreme Court. Judge Jackson is one of our nation's brightest legal minds and has an unusual breadth of experience in our legal system giving her the perspective to be an exceptional justice. Early Life and Education Jackson was born on September 14, 1970, in Washington, D.C. to educators Johnny and Ellery Brown, both graduates of historically black colleges and universities. When Jackson was four years old, the family moved to Miami, Florida, so that her father, a history teacher, whom Jackson cites as her inspiration, could attend University of Miami School of Law as a full-time student. The family lived in on-campus housing. Her father would ultimately become chief attorney for the Miami-Dade County Public School Board, while her mother became the principal at New World School of the Arts, located within Miami-Dade College, from 1993 to 2007. Her brother, Kataf Brown, is a graduate of Howard University and a former police officer who joined the United States Army after the September 11 attacks, serving two tours of duty in the Iraq War. Jackson is the niece of former officers, including Calvin Ross, who served 40 years in law enforcement as chief of Miami Police Department, later secretary of Florida Department of Juvenile Justice appointed by then-Governor Lawton Childs, and finally chief of police for Florida A&M University before retiring in 2012. Jackson grew up in the Miami area and graduated from Miami Palmetto Senior High School in 1988. In her senior year, she won the national oratory title at the National Catholic Forensic League Championships in New Orleans, the second-largest high school debate tournament in the United States. After high school, Jackson studied government at Harvard University. She performed improved comedy and took classes in drama, led protests against a student who displayed a Confederate flag from his dorm window. Jackson graduated in 1992 with an A.B. magna cum laude, having written a senior thesis entitled The Hand of Oppression plea bargaining processes, and the coercion of criminal defendants. Jackson worked as a staff reporter and researcher for Time magazine from 1992 to 1993, then attended Harvard Law School, where she was a supervising editor of the Harvard Law Review. She graduated in 1996 with a Juris Doctor cum laude. Career After law school, Jackson served as a law clerk to Judge Patty B. Saris of the U.S. District Court for the District of Massachusetts from 1996 to 1997, then to Judge Bruce M. Celia of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit from 1997 to 1998. She spent a year in private practice at the Washington, D.C. law firm Miller Cassidy La Roca and Lewin, now part of Baker Botts, then clerked for Justice Stephen Breyer of the U.S. Supreme Court from 1999 to 2000. Jackson worked in private legal practice from 2000 to 2003, first at the Boston-based law firm Goodwin Proctor from 2000 to 2002, then with Kenneth Feinberg at the law firm, now called Feinberg and Rosin LLP from 2002 to 2003. From 2003 to 2005, she was an assistant special counsel to the United States Sentencing Commission. From 2005 to 2007, Jackson was an assistant federal public defender in Washington, D.C., where she handled cases before U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit. A Washington Post review of cases Jackson handled during her time as a public defender showed that she won uncommon victories against the government that shortened or erased lengthy prison terms. From 2007 to 2010, Jackson was an appellate specialist at Morrison and Forster. U.S. Sentencing Commission. On July 23, 2009, Barack Obama nominated Jackson to become vice chair of the United States Sentencing Commission. The U.S. Senate confirmed Jackson by unanimous consent on February 11, 2010. She succeeded Michael E. Horowitz, who had served from 2003 until 2009. 
Jackson served on the Sentencing Commission until 2014. During her time on the commission, it retroactively amended the sentencing guidelines to reduce the guideline range for crack cocaine offenses and enacted the Drugs Minus Two Amendment, which implemented a two offense level reduction for drug crimes. District Court On September 20, 2012, Obama nominated Jackson to serve as a judge for the United States District Court for the District of Columbia to the seat vacated by retiring Judge Henry H. Kennedy Jackson was introduced at her December 2012 confirmation hearing by Republican Paul Ryan, a relative through marriage, who said our politics may differ, but my praise for Katanji's intellect, for her character, for her integrity, it is unequivocal. On February 14, 2013, her nomination was reported to the full Senate by voice vote of the Senate Judiciary Committee. She was confirmed by the full Senate by voice vote on March 22, 2013. She received her commission on March 26, 2013, and was sworn in by Justice Breyer in May 2013. During her time on the district court, Jackson wrote multiple decisions averse to the positions of the Trump administration. In her opinion ordering Trump's former White House counsel Donald McGahn to comply with a legislative subpoena, she wrote presidents are not kings. Jackson handled a number of challenges to executive agency actions that raised questions of administrative law. She also issued rulings in several cases that gained particular political attention. Bloomberg Law reported in spring 2021 that conservative activists were pointing to certain decisions by Jackson that had been reversed on appeal as a potential blemish on her record in 2019. Jackson ruled that provisions in three Trump executive orders conflicted with federal employee rights to collective bargaining. Her decision was reversed unanimously by the D.C. Circuit. Another 2019 decision involving a challenge to a Department of Homeland Security decision to expand the agency's definition of which non-citizens could be deported was also reversed by the D.C. Circuit. Nan Aaron, president of the Liberal Alliance for Justice, defended Jackson's record, saying Jackson has written nearly 600 opinions and been reversed less than 12 times. Selected rulings. In American Meat Institute v. U.S. Department of Agriculture, 2013, Jackson rejected the meat packing industry's request for a preliminary injunction to block a U.S. Department of Agriculture rule requiring them to identify animals' country of origin. Jackson found that the rule likely did not violate the First Amendment. In Depomet v. Department of Health and Human Services, 2014, Jackson ruled that the Food and Drug Administration had violated the Administrative Procedure Act when it failed to grant pharmaceutical company Depomed market exclusivity for its orphan drug, Gralis. Jackson concluded that the Orphan Drug Act required the FDA to grant Gralis exclusivity. In Pierce v. District of Columbia, 2015, Jackson ruled that the D.C. Department of Corrections violated the rights of a deaf inmate under the Americans with Disabilities Act because jail officials failed to provide the inmate with reasonable accommodations or to assess his need for reasonable accommodations during his detention in 2012. Jackson held that the district's willful blindness regarding Pierce's need for accommodation and its half-hearted attempt to provide Pierce with a random assortment of auxiliary aids and only after he specifically requested them fell far short of what the law requires. In April and June 2018, Jackson presided over two cases challenging the Department of Health and Human Services' decision to terminate grants for teen pregnancy prevention programs two years early. Jackson ruled that the decision to terminate the grants early, without any explanation for doing so, was arbitrary and capricious. In American Federation of Government Employees, AFL-CIOV, Trump, 2018, Jackson invalidated provisions of three executive orders that would have limited the time federal employee labor union officials could spend with union members, the issues that unions could bargain over in negotiations, and the rights of disciplined workers to appeal disciplinary actions. Jackson concluded that the executive orders violated the right of federal employees to collectively bargain, as guaranteed by the Federal Service Labor Management Relations Statute. In 2019, the D.C. Circuit, ruling that Judge Jackson had wrongly asserted jurisdiction, reversed and vacated her decision. In 2018, Jackson dismissed 40 wrongful death and product liability lawsuits stemming from the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, which had been combined into a single multi-district litigation. Jackson held that under the doctrine of forum non-convenience, the suits should be brought in Malaysia, not the United States. The D.C. Circuit affirmed this ruling in 2020. In 2019, in Center for Biological Diversity v. McAleenan, Jackson held that Congress had, 
through the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigrant Responsibility Act, stripped federal courts of jurisdiction to hear non-constitutional challenges to the U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security's decision to waive certain environmental requirements to facilitate construction of a border wall on the United States and Mexico border. In 2019, Jackson issued a preliminary injunction in Make the Road New York v. McAleenan, blocking a Trump administration rule that would have expanded expedited removal, fast-track deportations, without immigration court hearings for undocumented immigrants Jackson found that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security had violated the Administrative Procedure Act, APA, because its decision was arbitrary and capricious and the agency did not seek public comment before issuing the rule in a two-to-one ruling in 2020, the D.C. Circuit reversed the entry of the preliminary injunction, ruling that the IRERA, by committing the matter to the executive branch's sole and unreviewable discretion, precluded APA review of the decision. In 2019, Jackson issued a ruling in Committee on the Judiciary of the U.S. House of Representatives v. McGahn in which the House Committee on the Judiciary sued Don McGahn, former White House counsel for the Trump administration, to compel him to comply with the subpoena to appear at a hearing on its impeachment inquiry on issues of alleged obstruction of justice by the administration. McGahn declined to comply with the subpoena after U.S. President Donald Trump, relying on a legal theory of executive testimonial immunity, ordered McGahn not to testify. In a lengthy opinion, Jackson ruled in favor of the House Committee and held that senior-level presidential aides who have been subpoenaed for testimony by an authorized committee of Congress must appear for testimony in response to that subpoena even if the president orders them not to do so. Jackson rejected the administration's assertion of executive testimonial immunity by holding that with respect to senior-level presidential aides, absolute immunity from compelled congressional process simply does not exist. According to Jackson, that conclusion was inescapable precisely because compulsory appearance by dint of a subpoena is a legal construct, not a political one, and per the Constitution, no one is above the law. Jackson's use of the phrase presidents are not kings gained popular attention in subsequent media reporting on the ruling. In noting that Jackson took four months to resolve the case, including writing a 120-page opinion, the Washington Post wrote, that slow pace contributed to helping Mr. Trump run out the clock on the congressional oversight effort before the 2020 election. The ruling was appealed by the U.S. Department of Justice and the D.C. Circuit affirmed part of Jackson's decision nine months later in August 2020. While the case remained pending, on June 4, 2021, McGahn testified behind closed doors under an agreement reached with the Biden administration. Court of Appeals On March 30, 2021, President Joe Biden announced his intent to nominate Jackson to serve as a United States Circuit Judge for the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit on April 19, 2021, her nomination was sent to the Senate. President Biden nominated Jackson to the seat vacated by Judge Merrick Garland, who stepped down to become Attorney General. On April 28, 2021, a hearing on her nomination was held before the Senate Judiciary Committee. During her confirmation hearing, Jackson was questioned about several of her rulings against the Trump administration. On May 20, 2021, Jackson's nomination was reported out of committee by a 13-to-9 vote. On June 10, 2021, cloture was invoked on her nomination by a vote of 52-to-46. On June 14, 2021, the United States Senate confirmed Jackson in a 53-to-44 vote Republican Senators Susan Collins, Lindsey Graham and Lisa Murkowski joined all Democrats in voting to confirm her nomination. She received her judicial commission on June 17, 2021. Jackson's first decision as a court of appeals judge invalidated a 2020 rule by the Federal Labor Relations Authority that had restricted the bargaining power of federal sector labor unions. Legal Philosophy In January 2022, the New York Times reported that Jackson had not yet written a body of appeals court opinions expressing a legal philosophy, because she had joined the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit in the summer of 2021. However, the Times said, Jackson's earlier rulings comported with those of a liberal-leaning judge, including her opinions blocking various Trump administration actions. Additionally, a review of over 500 of her judicial opinions indicates she would likely be as liberal as Justice Stephen Breyer, the justice she is nominated to replace. According to Sahil Kapoor, writing for NBC News, Jackson fits well with the Democratic Party and the progressive movement's agenda due to her relative youth, background as a public defender, and history of labor-friendly rulings. 
Politico reported that Jackson is popular with liberal legal activists looking to replace Breyer with a justice willing to engage in ideological combat with the court's conservatives. Nomination to the U.S. Supreme Court In early 2022, news outlets speculated that Biden would nominate Jackson to the U.S. Supreme Court to fill the seat vacated by Stephen Breyer Biden pledged during the 2020 United States presidential election campaign to appoint a black woman to the court, should a vacancy occur Jackson's appointment to the D.C. Circuit, considered to be the second most influential federal court in the United States, behind only the Supreme Court, was viewed as preparation for a potential promotion to the Supreme Court. Jackson's potential nomination to the Supreme Court has been supported by civil rights and liberal advocacy organizations. The Washington Post wrote that Jackson's experience as a public defender has endeared her to the more liberal base of the Democratic Party. While her supporters have touted her history as a public defender as an asset, during her 2021 confirmation hearing, Republicans tried to cast her public defender work as a liability. On February 25, 2022, Biden announced that Jackson was his nominee for Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. Her nomination was sent to the Senate on February 28. Her confirmation hearings before the Senate Judiciary Committee opened on March 21. Affiliations Jackson is a member of the Judicial Conference Committee on Defender Services, as well as Harvard University's Board of Overseers and the Council of the American Law Institute. She also currently serves on the board of Georgetown Day School and the U.S. Supreme Court Fellows Commission. From 2010 to 2011, she served on the advisory board of Montrose Christian School which was a Baptist school. Jackson has served as a judge in several mock trials with the Shakespeare Theatre Company and for the Historical Society of the District of Columbia's mock court program Jackson presided over a mock trial, hosted by Drexel University's Thomas R. Klein School of Law in 2018, to determine if Vice President Aaron Burr was guilty of murdering Alexander Hamilton. In 2017, Jackson presented at the University of Georgia School of Law's 35th Edith House Lecture in 2018, Jackson participated as a panelist at the National Constitution Center's Town Hall on the Legacy of Alexander Hamilton, Indiana 2020. Jackson gave the Martin Luther King Jr. Day Lecture at the University of Michigan Law School, 97, and was honored at the University of Chicago Law School's third annual Judge James B. Parsons Legacy Dinner, which was hosted by the school's black law students. Association Personal life. In 1996, Brown married Surgeon Patrick Jackson, a Boston Brahmin who was a descendant of Continental Congress Delegate Jonathan Jackson and related to U.S. Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. Through her marriage, Jackson is related to former Speaker of the House Paul Ryan. The couple have two daughters, Layla and Talia. Jackson is a non denominational Protestant. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you have subscribed to this channel, and if you haven't kindly do so and don't forget to like, comment and share my videos. See you in our next video. Thank you.